Okay, believe it or not, it's uh, Erev Yom Kippur. We always say it's hard to believe how quickly it goes, but now we have another day to prepare for Yom Kippur. So we're going to try to just give one or two small ideas. One thing that's a pretty given, uh, a given idea is that if you try to, sometimes if you try to do too much, if you try to bite it off uh, more than you can chew, make these unbelievably big Kabbalahs for Yom Kippur, many times what happens is it lasts maybe till like Mosaf or Mencha on Yom Kippur, and then it's already too much to carry. So we're going to try to give one or two small ideas just about Yom Kippur, and hopefully it's something that you can take with us, we can take with us into the into Yom Kippur. So I'll tell you a little story. There was once a king, and this king, he sent a letter to some of his subjects that in this letter he wrote that he's going to be coming to town the king uh, obviously had a very large kingdom he didn't make it uh, very often to the different parts of his kingdom different uh, provinces he said he's coming he wants to see how the people in this particular province live so husband and wife letter comes in the mail they open the letter and they read this letter that the king is coming. So the, uh, the husband says to the wife right away, Listen, uh, if the king is coming, we need to change the furniture. I mean, look, it's pretty drabby around here. Not too nice. So what does the wife answer back? The wife answers back to the husband and says, Listen, first of all, for years I've been asking you to change the furniture. And you always tell me the same thing. It's okay. It's too expensive. And uh, we can't afford it. We can't afford the furniture. So now all of a sudden you're deciding that you have the funds. The funds are available to change the furniture. And second of all, the wife says to the husband, if the king is coming to see how we live, and that's exactly what it says in the letter, so let him see how we live. You never know. Maybe he'll have sympathy on us and he'll see that we live in poverty. And, uh, or whatever, whatever the reason might be, but if the king is coming to see how we live, let us uh, show him exactly how we live. Let him see, let him see the real story. So the husband answers back a very, very, uh, very, very uh, sharp answer. And he says like this, the way we're looking at it, and the way you're looking at it, is not the way we should be looking at it. He said, if the king wanted to actually know how we were living, let's say, right, the king really wanted to know how we were living, what would he do? He would leave his castle, he would leave his palace, and he would show up here and just surprise us and see how we live. But by the very fact that the king sent us a letter and he told us he's coming to see how we live, it's not that the king wants to see how we live always. The king wants to see how we live when we know that the king is coming. That's what the king wants to see. He sent us a letter. He told, he told us that he's coming. He wants to see how much we respect him. How we live and how we act when we know that the king is coming. During our Sarasi made tshuva, HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells us, sends us this message, this letter, I'm coming. And not only am I coming, but I'm here. I'm, I'm right here. I'm right outside the city. I'm right here. That's a Sarasi made tshuva. And the person might think, you know, we have these benhagim that we do during a Sarasi made tshuva. People eat only pasta yisrael. They're makbed. People that aren't always makbed. A chal yisrael. Eat chal yisrael. People do. There's, there's many different chumras that people do. Small things. Large things. But small things here and there. And you might think that, come on guys. Come on. Who, who are you fooling? You're just faking it. I mean, come on, we all know. I mean, you're doing this for 10 days, and after Yom Kippur, you're not doing it. So we might think that we're just, it, it's sort of fake. So no. The idea is that, of course, it's not. You're changing little things. You're fine-tuning the things in your life that, right now, Hashem is watching us. And He's here, and He wants to see how we live when we know that He's close. When we know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is right here, between uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and now we're standing on the threshold of Yom Kippur, HaKadosh Baruch Hu's mamish right here. He wants to see how we act. 
do we change just little things? Are we more Nizar this week, today, tomorrow? Are you going to be a little more Zayar in, uh, in Lashon Hara, in, uh, in, in not listening to Lashon Hara, Shmir Salashen? Are you going to do a little bit, just a little bit more, Liman Atayra? Is it going to be just a little bit more Kedusha in your life? Right? In other words, we, and we all know, many times it doesn't last much beyond Yom Kippur. But the answer is, that's the point. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to see how we're acting now. Do we do the little things to change? Because we know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is here. And that, by doing those little things, and by changing those little things, we're really showing the respect and awe that we feel for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And you know, you'd be surprised that each year, every year, if somebody changes just one little thing every year, just how you daven, what time you come to davening, how you speak, how you treat people, just a little thing. You'd be surprised after a couple of years what a different person you are and how these things add up and how it really, really makes a person into a different person. So now, what do we have to do? So just like in the story, we have to change the furniture. And I like to say, what we have to do is we have to change the spiritual furniture. And sometimes we have to look around and say some things that are going on in our lives, they need some fine tuning. You know, out with the old couch, you don't have to, doesn't have to be a $5,000 or $10,000 couch. I'm not sure exactly the standards of the entire audience um, online. But the bottom line is that sometimes we make it just a little nicer. Whatever we were doing, whatever we had till now, we'll brush it up, we'll clean it up, we'll make those small kabbalas, those small things that show that we care. Change your midas a little bit, just a little bit. Don't make these grand kabbalas and everything, just a little bit. You know, when it, when it comes to Yom Kippur, when it comes this time of the year, so people have this, some of the, if you ask people, what do you have to do, what are we doing this time of the year? So people say, I want to be nice to others. I want to be uh, honest to other people. I want to be truthful to my neighbors, to my family, to my friends. But there sometimes is a point that I think slips people's minds. You know, it's, we're very quick to say, which is good sometimes, that we're going to do for others. But when it comes to Yom Kippur, sometimes you have to be just a little bit selfish, I think. That part of, a very, very big part of Yom Kippur is being honest with yourself. Because there are people that can go on for years and years and years, and you're used to the old furniture, you're used to the way it looks, you're used to the way it feels, and it comes Yom Kippur, and, and, and it comes, and the years just roll on, and you're totally dishonest with yourself. There are people that can go on for years and years, and after a while you believe the things about yourself that you're lying to yourself about. And it comes Yom Kippur, we're saying just take a step back. Take a little step back. Be honest with yourself. Because if you're not honest with yourself, you can't even begin. You can't start. You cannot come to Yom Kippur tomorrow night still telling yourself the same lies and the same foolishness that you've been telling yourself over the past who knows how many years. The Mishnah says, the Maimar of Rabbi Kiva. Everybody knows this Maimar of Rabbi Kiva. Ashrechem Yisrael. Lifnei mi atem metayrim eschem. Lifnei mi atem metayrim. Umi metayrim eschem. Who is... Being Metair, Klai Yisrael, Avichem Sheba Shemayim. We all know, it's a, it's a song, it's more than one song. It's one of these memories that people know about. So Rabbi Kiva is telling us to Yisoy about Kapora and Tahara on Yom Kippur. That even though a person does Averis, Yom Kippur comes and the Averis are forgiven. So really, we have to ask the uh, Kasha right away. We know there's a Gemara, the Gemara says in Baba Kama, Dafnun Amar Aleph, that anybody who says, that a Kaddish Baruch Hu is a Vatran, that a Kaddish Baruch Hu just, he doesn't mind. You do an Avera, he doesn't mind. A Kaddish Baruch Hu doesn't mind. He doesn't care. Anybody who says that, it's also to say that. You're not allowed to say that a Kaddish Baruch Hu is a Vatran. So what does it mean that Yom Kippur comes, and there's actually a machlekes of whether it's the Tshuva on Yom Kippur, or it's just the Itzumoy Shalyon, even the day of Yom Kippur is Machaper. So what about all of that? What's Rabbi Kiva saying? Ashrechem Yisrael, umi metayr eschem, avichem sheba shemayim. If Kippur comes, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to be metayr you. What does that mean? It means HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't care? HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't care? You can do whatever you want the whole year, and then the Averis just disappear? No, you can't say that. So Nesim Shalom says a beautiful, beautiful thing over here. He, 
he says over from the Maral. The Maral says in his drushes that, like we've mentioned a couple of times in the past, that when is Yom Kippur mechaper on a person? Yom Kippur is mechaper if you're mevatel yourself totally to Kaddish Baruch Hu. Not halfway, not three quarters. It comes Yom Kippur, you're totally mevatel yourself. You say, Kaddish Baruch Hu, I am yours. You're being mevatel yourself totally. And we become dovuk to Kaddish Baruch Hu. We become extremely attached to Kaddish Baruch Hu. And when you become attached to Kaddish Baruch Hu, you become, that's v'yatam adveke v'ashem alekechem. We, we've mentioned so many times that it's Dvekas Bashem. Every mitzvah is a way to Dvekas Bashem. We become so attached to Hashem that we, we become like one to Hashem. And of course, for Baruch Hu, there's no chatoim. So the morale says that if you are mevatel yourself totally to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you become one with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And of course, in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's world, Kaviyachal, there is no chet. There is no such a chet. So that's why we now we can understand the member of Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Kiva says, Ma mikveh metayer, as, just like a mikveh is metayer uh, uh, a yid. Well, how is a mikveh metayer a yid? If you keep your hand out of the mikveh, it's not metayer you. You have to be totally, totally immersed in the mikvah. So we say, Ma mikvah metayeres atmeim. Just like a mikvah is metayer atmeim. When? When you're totally, totally immersed in the water. It's the same thing. Kach ha-kadosh baruch hu metayeres Yisrael. Mi metayer eschem avichem sheba shamay. Ha-kadosh baruch hu's metayer Yisrael the same way. When we come to Yom Kippur and we say, ha-kadosh baruch hu, I haven't been that good. But I'm going to do the little things. I'm going to do what it takes. I'm being mevato myself totally to ha-kadosh baruch hu. That's Yom Kippur. And therefore, so it's not Pshat that you're doing Averis and they're disappearing and HaKadosh Baruch Hu looks the other way. No, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is getting the message from us that for sure we're going to be better. And we want to bring ourselves so double to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that we become one with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And therefore, once we're one with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, there's no Averis. So let's take this message. Remember this. We're going to come tomorrow night to Shul and Yom Kippur. It's, uh, you know, more than ever, we're so inundated with every minute we have to run and we have to text and we have to hear our messages and we have to, we have to tell ourselves stories and lie to ourselves and make up stories and everything. Life sometimes is one big rush and one big whatever. But it comes to Yom Kippur night, more than ever we appreciate now, shut your cell phone, turn everything off, time to reflect, time to be honest with ourselves. You come to Shul tomorrow night, think for a few minutes, be honest with yourself, what do I really need to improve? And there, and then we should taka become so much more close to Akash Baruch Hu. We should be mevatel ourselves to Akash Baruch Hu, and Akash Baruch Hu should give every one of us a gemar chasim a a good keben shiar, and a year of bracha and atzlocha for everybody. And it, this should taka be Yom Kippur, the last Yom Kippur in Galus. We should taka be, become one with Akash Baruch Hu, and Akash Baruch Hu should finally see that all of Klai Yisrael is being that way, and we should be zayicha to go. This year, right at the Yom Kippur, if it doesn't happen tomorrow, to Yerushalayim, Yerakaydish, Emir Tashem.